Hello, and welcome to the Photoshop 7 Overworld Map Project. I am RPG Map Maker, and what I'm going to be doing is showing you a PSD or Photoshop file that I've uh, been developing for quite some time now, and uh, just more out of a need to get it out there so that uh, other people can play with it. I have started this uh, set of tutorials to kind of uh, show you around that PSD and uh, show you some of the things that I do in it. Uh, so what we're going to start off with is uh, my plug for the Cartographer's Guild, which is uh, something that I found uh, a couple of years ago and have been frequenting it ever since. Uh, it's a great resource for anything map related. Uh, so if you're into maps or you want to look around just to, to see what's going on there, this is a great resource. I'm going to jump right in. Um, basically what I can do in this Photoshop file is paint mountains, highland, lowland, uh, grass, trees, rivers, and some snow on top of the mountains. I've kind of separated everything out into layers. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to talk about uh, probably just the, these first three, the mountain, the lowland, and the highland. So starting off with the mountain, let's open up the uh, layer style so that I can show you this bevel and emboss that I've put on there. It's an inner bevel with a chisel soft uh, the depths are going to be kind of subjective to whatever Photoshop file you're going to be working in. As uh, if you make it really huge, you're going to have to make these numbers a little larger. Or again, if you make it smaller, you might want to make them smaller. Uh, but this is going to affect the height of the mountain and how much uh, slope that there is. You're going to have to set up your light based on where the light source in your world is. And uh, after that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. I haven't really messed with any of these settings down here with the highlight mode or the shadow mode. And the only other thing I've done is add a color overlay because I'm lazy and I like all the mountains to be the same brown. Um, now I'm going to use this mountain brush preset uh, that I've kind of been working on. It's just a standard, here let me show you this, it's a standard grunge brush that comes in Photoshop that's just set to a certain size. Uh, the opacity is set at 100 flow to 100 and set to normal and it kind of looks like this when you click and drag or if you just click once that's kind of what it looks like so here let me draw out a, a quick mountain range my mouse doesn't go crazy there we go and uh, using kind of a star pattern you can kind of make some peaks and I generally start kind of thin and then I blow this brush up to maybe 30 pixels and then I kind of rough up with just some clicking some single clicks I'll rough up those edges to give it kind of a more dynamic look that gets more of those uh, edges that uh, you kind of see sticking out in all directions as opposed to just one straight mountain range that uh, might look something like this kind of nondescript mountain um, now I integrate uh, most of the land with the highland and lowland to sort of make this uh, integrate more with this flat background. The lowland and highland layers are uh, pretty much identical as far as this bevel and emboss that's put on here. It's a pillow emboss with a smooth, the depth is set all the way up, and uh, the size is set fairly low. And for the lowland region, I have the up selected for the direction. And it's uh, pretty much the same lighting that I'm using on the mountains. But uh, the important thing is that the direction is up, uh, whereas uh, on the highland layer, the direction is going to be set to down, so that they're uh, diametrically opposed to one another. And this just basically changes where the shadow is and where the light is that uh, gives you this, uh, oop, using the wrong brush. Here, I'll switch over to this dirt brush that I use. And the dirt brush is the same as the mountain brush except that the opacity is set to 5%. So let me blow this up a little bit so you can see. And basically what it does is at 5%, it allows you to click, drag, and then dig even more in every time you click because you're adding opacity with each click as it kind of stacks on top of each other. So the highlight is down here on the bottom and the shadow is up here on the top for the lowland region. Now for the highland region, it's exactly opposite so it gives you the, the optical illusion 
of depth. You can build up on top of that to make it kind of a taller area or a deeper area. If you're on lowland, you can kind of dig in and make some diametrically opposed shapes and, and whatnot. Now to finish off uh, the highland and lowland regions, I use a, the a smudge tool. I've got a preset that I kind of use that sets the opacity or strength, in this case, to 33%, and the mode is set to normal. And I just kind of smear until it gets to to what I like it to be. Um, this is sort of play it by brush stroke, if you will. It's a lot like finger painting, and it gives you the ability to kind of create the topographical features, if you will, the valleys and bridge lines or or whatever. You can sort of get the darkest areas to be close to one another to get kind of cliffs. You can get some flat areas and you can get some slopey areas. But the more you work with uh, this kind of finger painting method, the more you'll kind of see how it works. And on the highland it's the, the same thing. You just kind of make your hills and integrate them in by smearing them right up to whatever land feature you're working on. And you can get the same kind of smeared effect. And if the uh, the highlight or the low light bothers you a little bit, like maybe on your map, this highlight region is a little strong. You can just go in here to the, the bevel and emboss and you can kind of bring this. Uh, I'm going to play with this off screen, so you can watch the, uh, the highlight just disappear. Now, obviously, now it doesn't look like it has any depth at all. You can kind of bring it just up a little bit to all the way strong if you want. But uh, for now, I'm going to keep that set to where it was. But that's uh, that's these three layers, and uh, you can use other tools to uh, to work on these layers. Like for instance, on the highland layer, if I use my Dirt Two brush, which is uh, the same as my trees brush, just kind of with some different settings, it throws some grunge on here. And this will allow me to smear some erosion type of effects and kind of rough up the land a little bit while not uh, not adding huge hills or anything like that to it. And that just gives me a little bit of texture to work with. I've also got some other texture brushes that I use, but you get the idea that uh, all you have to do is throw down a little bit of texture and you can kind of work with it a little bit. That's what my grass one layer is, for instance. Um, with my grass one brush, I can just throw a little bit of bumpy texture onto an area that I might uh, want to put some grass down on. My grass two brush, or my grass two layer. <laughs> and again, I'm, I plan on posting all these resources onto the uh, Cartographer's Guild website so that uh, others can play around with this uh, this kind of method that I'm developing and uh, if they so choose uh, maybe improve on it as uh, there's uh, obviously room for improvement but uh, you kind of see how these elements could start coming together and then again you can kind of smear these until they get to where you want them to be and you can have to work with the colors a little bit you can hue and saturate and do some other things to make this work for you, but uh, after going over grass and uh, some of the basic texture stuff in the mountains, I'm going to call it quits for this tutorial and uh, pick it up again in part two uh, where I'll go over trees and maybe some more integration work, uh, maybe add some snow to the tops of these mountains and maybe put a river down here in this, uh, this lowland region. But for now, uh, have a happy time mapping.